In this video, I will be discussing about homogeneous differential equations. The first order differential equation in the form of m of x and y dx plus n of x and y dy which is equal to zero is homogeneous when m and n are homogeneous functions of the same degree in x and y. So how do we know that these functions m and n which are in terms of x and y are homogeneous? The functions m and n are homogeneous functions of the same degree in x and y provided that m of tx and ty is equivalent to t to the power n of m of x and y and n of tx and ty is equivalent to t to the power n times n of x and y. So what is the meaning of this statement? I would like to translate that statement in layman's term. In simpler words, the differential equation is homogeneous if the sums of the exponents for each term in the equation are all the same, which means that all the sums of the exponents of the literal coefficients for all the terms are all the same. And if the differential equation is homogeneous first order differential equation, then we can solve using either of the two substitutions. So you can use y equals vx or x equals vy. Now, if you are going to use y equals vx, then you need also to use the differential of this y. And the differential of this y is we apply also the product rule for this vx. And the product rule is v dx plus x dv. Or you can use your x which is equal to vy but you need also to substitute the differential of your x which is the product rule of this product. So this is v dy plus y dv. Now remember that the use of the third variable here, the v, in the substitution is to reduce the homogeneous equation into a differential equation in which the variables could be separated from one another. And take note that both of these substitutions, whether you use y or you use x, it will provide the same solution to the homogeneous equation. However, in terms of mathematical works, one has a decided advantage over the other, which means that one may be shorter than the other substitution. So there are cases that when you use your y substitution, the mathematical solution is longer than when you use the, the x substitution. Or there are times also that when you use your y substitution, the length of the solution is shorter than when you use the x substitution. Actually, in practice, it is suggested that you use the substitution y if your function n in this differential equation is simpler than the function m. So if your n function is simpler compared to the m function, so you use the y substitution. But if your m function is simpler than n function, then you need to use x substitution so as to have a shorter solution for the given differential equation. So at this point, 
let us have some illustrations of the concept that I presented there. Which of the following equations is not a homogeneous differential equation? Letter A, 2 times the quantity of 2x squared plus y squared times dx plus xy times dy is equal to 0. Is this a homogeneous differential equation? Let us check. Now here, the exponent for this term, 2x squared, is 2. And the exponent of y squared is also 2. And also the exponent of x is 1 here, but the exponent of y is 1. So if you add, it has a sum of 2. So in this term, the sum of the exponent is 2. So 2 here, and this term is also 2. And also this term has an exponent of 2. So this differential equation is a homogeneous differential equation. Letter B, is this a homogeneous differential equation? Let us check. Y, the power of Y is 1. So when you multiply it to L and Y, the degree is 1. Also, when you multiply Y to L and X, the term has a degree 1. Also, here, x dy, the exponent is 1. So, all of the terms are having degree 1. So, this is a homogeneous differential equation. So, this is not the answer to this question. Letter C, is this a homogeneous differential equation? Let us check. When y is multiplied to 2x squared, the power of y is 1. So, when 1 is added to 2, that is 3. So, in this case, the first term has a degree 3. Also, this xy, when multiplied to y here, the result is xy squared. So, the exponent of x is 1 and the resulting exponent of y is 2. So, 2 plus 1 is still 3. Also, when y is multiplied to y squared, the exponent is 3. So, here, the sum of the exponent is 3. Here is also 3. Here is also 3. Let us check also this one here. When x squared is multiplied by 2x, the product is 2x cubed. So, the degree of for this term is 3. Also, when multiplied this x squared to y, the result is x squared y. So we have the exponent of x which is 2 and the exponent of y which is 1. So 2 plus 1 is 3. So still 3, this term is also 3 and all of these 3 terms are having degrees of 3. So therefore, each term here has degree 3. Hence, this is a homogeneous differential equation. So, still, this is not the answer to the question. Letter D. dy dx equals negative of 2y squared all over x squared plus 2xy. So, is this a homogeneous differential equation? Let us check. This term, 2y squared, the degree is 2 because the exponent is 2 for the y. And this term is also having an exponent of 2. And so with this term, the exponent of x is 1 and the exponent of y is 1. So when you add the exponent, the sum is 2. Therefore, the degree for this term is still 2. So the degree here is 2, the degree of this term is 2, and so with the numerator, the degree is 2. So all the terms are having the same degree. Hence, this is still a homogeneous differential equation. Letter E. Let's try. Is this a homogeneous differential equation? The exponent of y is 1. y times x squared, that is x squared y. So 2 plus 1 is 3. So with this term, the degree is 3. 
and also when y is multiplied to y squared the product is y cubed so y cubed is having a degree 3 so 3 here and also this term is also 3 let us try this term x times 3x the product is 3x squared and since the exponent is 2 then therefore the degree is 2 which is different from the first two terms although the last term when x is multiplied by y squared the product is xy squared so the sum is 1 plus 2 it's 3 but this term is different why the degree for this term is 2 or in other words the sum of the exponent is 2 hence all of the terms are not having the same degree therefore this is not a homogeneous differential equation so to the question which one of the following is not a homogeneous differential equation the answer to that question is letter e because this is an example of a differential equation that is not a homogeneous differential equation so let's have here our example number one find the general solution of this differential equation 2 times the quantity of 2x squared plus y squared times dx plus xy times dy which is equal to 0. So how do you solve the general solution of this? Now first let us check whether this one is a homogeneous differential equation. This is a homogeneous differential equation because the first term is having a degree 2. Also this one is 2. This one is also 2 because the exponent of x is 1 and the exponent of y is 1. So therefore the sum is 2. Hence this term is having degree 2. And looking at this differential equation, we notice that a multiplier of dy is more simpler than the multiplier of dx which is this one here so we write it here since n is simpler than m then we use the substitution y equals vx there and how do we know that this is n because this is the multiplier of dy that is our differential form of our differential equation that the multiplier of dy is our n function and the multiplier of dx is our m function so if the multiplier of dy is simpler than the multiplier of dx then therefore we need to use this substitution y equals vx and because we use this substitution we need also to use its differential dy and the differential of this is the differential of the product so that is v dx plus x dv there so if you substitute that one to this differential equation we have 2 times 2x squared plus y squared but our y is vx so we need to square that one there and that is multiplied by dx plus x times y but our y is vx and multiplied by dy but our dy is v dx plus x dv there and this is equated to zero so multiplying two to each of these terms here we have 4x squared dx distributing also dx to this binomial here and then we have 2v squared 
x squared because the square of vx is v squared x squared and then we need to multiply it to dx also when you multiply x times vx and that is v squared x squared because x times x is x squared and v times v is v squared so you need to multiply also this product here to this binomial and this is added to v x cubed dv because the two x's here when multiplied to another x the product is x cubed but we still have a v here so that is v x cubed dv which is equated to zero and then we need to combine similar terms here so this is 2 v squared x squared dx plus v squared x squared dx so that becomes 3 so we have 4 x squared dx from this one here plus 3 v squared x squared dx and this is added to this one here v x cubed dv which is equal to zero now at this point we see that there are common factors to all of these three terms so we need to eliminate that one by multiplying this equation by one over x squared so when this term is multiplied by this 1 over x squared, the result is 4dx. And when this term is multiplied by 1 over x squared, we have 3v squared dx. Also, when this term is multiplied by this 1 over x squared, we have plus vx dv, which is equal to 0 because 0 times 1 over x squared is 0. Now we can group these terms here because they have a factor of dx. So we have 4 plus 3v squared quantity multiplied by dx. And this is added to vx dv which is equal to 0. And as you can notice here, that this is a separable differential equation. Why? Because we can simply separate the two variables, the v's from the x's here. So because this is a dx, we need to eliminate this one here by dividing both sides of the equation by 4 plus 3v squared. And also because this is dv, we need to eliminate x by dividing also x here. And when you divide this term to the left, you need also to divide this term to the right, which is 4 plus 3v squared times x. So therefore, this factor and this factor cancels each other. So what will remain is dx over x and this is added to this one when divided by this one will cancel each other so what will remain is v dv over the denominator of 4 plus 3 v squared which is equal to 0 now as you can see that this differential equation is a separable differential equation and since this is a separable differential equation then we can take the integral for each term in this equation so the integral of dx over x plus the integral of v dv over 4 plus 3v squared which is equal to 0 
Now, you notice that this one is very easy to integrate, but this one needs your knowledge in your previous calculus that when you let your u be equal to 4 plus 3v squared, your du is 0 because the derivative of 4 is 0, but the derivative of 3v squared is 6v dv. But we don't have this 6 in our integrand here. So we need to eliminate 6 by dividing both sides of the equation by 6. So this is du over 6, which is equal to v dv. So by substitution, we have the integral of dx over x plus the integral of v dv, which is this one here. So this is du over 6. And this is divided by your u, which is this one here. So this is over u, which the whole sum is 0. So you can factor out the constant in the denominator, which is 6 here. So we have 1 6 of the integral of du over u, which is equal to 0. So at this point, we need to apply our knowledge in our integral calculus that the integral of dx over x is ln x and the integral of du over u is ln u. And this is equal to the constant of integration, say, c sub 1. So to eliminate this 6 in the denominator here, we need to multiply both sides of the equation by 6. So we have 6 ln x plus ln u because 6 times 1 6 is 1. And this is equal to c sub 2 because 6 times c sub 1 is 6 c sub 1. But 6 is a constant and c sub 1 is a constant, the result is still a constant. And we will name that constant as c sub 2. Wherein c sub 2 is the product of a constant and another constant. So applying the properties of logarithm, we have ln x to the power 6 plus ln of our u. And our u is 4 plus 3v squared and this is equal to c sub 2 and applying again another properties of logarithms that the sum of logarithms is just a logarithm of their product so this is the logarithm of x to the power 6 times 4 plus 3v squared which is equal to c sub 2. And of course, we need to go back to our original variable because our v is obtained from our substitution that y, which is equal to vx. So v is equal to y over x. So then we can use this value of v to substitute to our equation here. So this is plus 3v and our v is y over x quantity squared which is equal to c sub 2. So we have ln of x to the power of 6 times 4 plus 3 y squared over x squared and this is equal to c sub 2 so combining these two terms here we have ln of x to the power of 6 times 4 x squared which is added to 3y squared 
when you find the LCD of these two terms. And this is equal to C sub 2. So therefore, we can cancel this x squared from one of the factor here, which is also x squared. So this is x to the power of 4 times 4x squared plus 3y squared, which is equal to c sub 2. So converting this one to its equivalent exponential form, we have x to the power of 4 times 4x squared plus 3y squared is equal to e to the power c sub 2. But this c sub 2 is a constant which is used as an exponent to another constant. So the result is still a constant. So we will write this one as x to the power of 4 times 4x squared plus 3y squared which is equal to the constant c which is the result of this constant raised to another constant and we say that this is the general solution of the given differential equation so let's proceed to our example number two here determine the general solution of y times the quantity ln of y minus ln of x dx minus x times dy which is equal to zero now first of all we need to check whether this is a homogeneous differential equation now this term y when multiplied to ln y the degree is only 1 and also y when multiplied to ln x the degree is also 1 and also this y x dy the degree is 1 so since all of the exponents for all the terms in this differential equation are all the same then we say that this is a homogeneous differential equation now next we need to check which one is simpler is it the coefficient of dy or the coefficient of dx and as you can see that the multiplier of dy is simpler than the multiplier of dx so we say that since n is simpler than m because the multiplier of dy is our n and the multiplier of dx is our m so we say that n is simpler than m so because n is simpler then we use this substitution y equals vx and because we are using this substitution we need also to use its differential and the differential is obtained when we apply the product rule for this product. So we have V dx plus x dv. So we say that when we substitute our value of y here, we have Vx times ln of Vx because our y is vx minus ln of x times dx and this will be subtracted by x times dy and the value of our dy is this so this is v dx plus x dv here and this is equated to zero. So applying the properties of logarithms here, we have Vx times ln of Vx over x because the difference of these two logarithms is the logarithm 
of their quotient. So this is multiplied by dx and distributing this x to this binomial here we have minus vx dx minus x squared dv and this is equated to zero now simplifying this fraction here we have vx times the ln of v dx minus vx dx minus x squared dv which is equal to zero but since these two terms here are having factors of dx we can factor out dx there so this is vx ln v minus vx times dx and this will be subtracted by x squared dv and again we see that there is a common factor between these two terms which is the vx so vx times ln v minus 1 dx minus x squared dv which is equal to 0 and you notice that this is already a separable differential equation why because we can easily separate the x from the v and how will you do that i need to divide both sides of the equation by this v l and v minus 1 so that what remains in this term will be purely in terms of excess so let us divide by v times l and v minus 1 and also this second term so that this will be in terms of v alone we need to eliminate this x squared here by dividing also x squared to all of the terms so when you divide to the left by this one i need to divide also to the right by this one here so we can cancel the v's and the l and v minus one there and also one of the x's in this x squared so what will remain is dx over x minus this x squared can be cancelled by this x squared so what will remain is dv over v times ln v minus 1 and this is equal to 0 now you see that this is already a separable differential equation so therefore we can take the integral for all the terms in this differential equation so the integral of dx over x minus the integral of dv over v times ln v minus 1 and this is equated to 0 however this one is very easy to integrate but this one needs an adequate review from your previous calculus that if you let u be this term here l and v minus 1 and find the du we have this one as dv over v and this is minus 0 because the derivative of 1 is 0 and this gives us the idea that this v here should be the denominator of our dv so we have the integral of the x over x minus the integral of dv over v which is over ln v minus 1 and by substitution we have there the integral of our du over u and this is equal to zero now looking at these expressions here 
it's very easy to find its antiderivative. So the antiderivative of dx over x is ln x and the antiderivative of du over u is ln u which is equal to the constant of integration c. And substituting back to our original variables here, we have ln x minus the ln of u. And our u is ln v minus 1, which is equal to the constant of integration c. However, the difference of these two logarithms can be simplified when you apply the properties of logarithms that the difference of logarithms is just equal to the logarithm of their quotient. So this is ln of x over this ln of v minus 1. And this is equal to the constant of integration c. Now, transforming this one to its equivalent exponential form, we have x over ln v minus 1 which is equal to e to the power c and remember this constant e when raised to another constant the result is still a constant so we can simplify that one as x over ln v minus 1 which is equal to c but our v is from our substitution which is y equals vx then our v is equal to y over x so we can substitute this one here so we have x over ln of y over x minus 1 which is equal to c so we have x which is equal to c times ln of y over x minus 1 if you multiply both sides of the equation by this ln y over x minus 1 or you can have a clean answer by expressing this one as ln of y minus ln of x minus 1 there and this is our answer for the given differential equation now let's proceed to our example number 3 here find the general solution of the differential equation y times the quantity of 2x squared minus xy plus y squared times dx minus x squared times the quantity of 2x minus y times dy which is equal to zero so first let us check whether this is a homogeneous differential equation now y when multiplied by x squared the sum of the exponent is 3 and also when y is multiplied to xy that is xy squared and the sum of the exponent of xy squared is also 3. Also y when multiplied to y squared, the exponent is 3. So for this trinomial, its term has a degree of 3. And also this one, x squared when multiplied by 2x, that is 2x cubed. So the degree is 3. And also x squared when multiplied by y, the degree is 3 because 2 which is the exponent of x plus 1 which is the exponent of y is 3 so all of the terms are having degree 3 hence this is a homogeneous differential equation now you notice that the multiplier of dy which is our n function is simpler than the multiplier of dx so we say here in our solution that since n is simpler than m 
then we use the substitution of y which is equal to vx and also its differential which is the derivative of this vx which is v dx plus x dv so substituting this one to our differential equation our y which is vx times 2x squared minus x times our y which is vx plus y squared and since our y is vx we need to square the product and the whole thing is multiplied by dx minus x squared times 2x minus y which is our vx and this is multiplied by dy which is this one v dx plus x dv and this is equated to zero so we have two v x q and this is also minus v squared x cubed because v times v is v squared and x times the two x's here we have x cubed plus v cubed x cubed because the square of this vx is v squared x squared when multiplied to vx that is v cubed x cubed and this trinomial is multiplied by dx minus 2x times x squared is 2x cubed and this x squared when multiplied by vx that is vx cubed and this is multiplied by this binomial here v dx plus x dv which is equal to zero now we can multiply the dx to each of the terms here so we have 2v x cubed dx minus v squared x cubed dx plus v cubed x cubed dx minus the product of this binomial and this binomial so we have 2v x cubed dx and also this one when multiplied by this one we have 2x to the fourth dv and also this one when multiplied by this we have minus v squared x cubed dx also this one when multiplied by this we have v x to the fourth dv there so simplifying our terms here we have 2v x cubed dx minus v squared x cubed dx plus v cubed x cubed dx minus this one minus 2v x cubed dx minus of the plus which is minus 2x to the fourth dv minus of the minus which is positive v squared x cubed dx minus of the minus is positive v x to the fourth dv and this is equated to zero so we can cancel this term and this term here also we can combine this one v squared x cubed with this one so it cancels one another so what remains are this v cubed x cubed dx and then we have plus vx to the fourth dv 
and then we have also minus 2x to the fourth dv and this is equal to 0 now looking at these three terms here we have a common factor which is x cubed so we can multiply each term of this equation by 1 over x cubed so we have v cubed dx and this is plus v x dv and we have minus 2 x dv here and you notice that this is a separable differential equation so we can easily separate v from x so to separate v from x we need to divide both sides of the equation by v cube so that I can eliminate the v cube here and so that I can eliminate x here I need also to divide both sides of the equation by x so I'm dividing here v cube x at the left we need also to divide v cube x to the right so when this one is divided by v cube x what remains is dx over x and this is added to dv over v squared because the excess here cancels each other and one of the v here will be cancelled to this v in the numerator and this is subtracted by 2 dv over v cube because this x here and this x cancels each other so this is equal to 0 now you see that this is clearly a separable differential equation so we can take the integral to each term here so the integral of dx over x and the integral of dv over v squared minus 2 times the integral of dv over v cubed which is equal to 0 now we can say that the second integral can be expressed as v to the power negative 2 dv and also the third one which is v to the power negative 3 dv because you want to use the power rule in integration so we have the integral of dx over x which is ln x and then plus v to the power negative 1 over the negative 1 by the power rule and this is also v to the power negative 2 over the negative 2 and this is equated to the constant of integration c so simplifying these terms here we have ln x minus 1 over v and this minus 2 with this minus 2 can cancel each other so this is 1 over v squared which is equal to the constant of integration c and to eliminate these v's here in the denominators we can multiply all the terms of this equation by v squared so we have v squared ln x minus v plus 1 which is equal to c v squared but our v which is from the substitution y equals vx we have v which is equal to y over x so this is our value of v so we have y over x to the power of 2 ln x minus y over x plus 1 which is equal to c times y over x to the power of 2 so 
simplifying we have y squared over x squared ln x and then we have y over x plus 1 which is equal to cy squared over x squared and then if you multiply both sides of this equation by x squared you can get the result as y squared times ln x minus xy plus x squared minus cy squared which is equal to zero or you may simplify it further by factoring the common which is y squared for these two terms we have y squared times ln x minus c minus xy plus x squared which is equal to zero and this is the general solution of the given differential equation so at this point let us continue to our fourth example determine the particular solution of this differential equation and y equals 2 when x equals 8 so first we need to check whether this is a homogeneous differential equation we have here 2y squared and the degree is 2 and this term x squared the degree is also 2 and this term 2xy the degree is also 2 because the exponent of x is 1 and the exponent of y is 1 so 1 plus 1 equals 2 since all the terms are having the same degree then this is a homogeneous differential equation so here we need first to transform this differential equation to its differential form by multiplying both sides of the equation by dx and also multiplying both sides of the equation by x squared plus 2xy so we have x squared plus 2xy times dy and this is equal to negative 2y squared times dx and then we can move this one to the left side of the equation we have 2y squared dx plus the quantity of x squared plus 2xy dy and this is equated to 0 now as you can see that the multiplier of dx is simpler than the multiplier of dy so we say that since m is simpler than n then we use the substitution of x which is equal to vy and its differential which is dx equals v dy plus y dv so we have 2y squared which is from here and then our dx we will substitute this one which is v dy plus y dv and this is added to our x squared which is v y quantity squared plus 2 times our x which is v y times y and then this is multiplied by dy which is equal to 0 so we can multiply this 2y squared to this binomial here so we have 2 v y squared dy and then this is added to 2 y cubed dv and this is added to v squared y squared dy and plus 2 v y squared 
dy and this is equated to zero so we can combine this term and this term here because they are similar terms so we have 4 v y squared dy and this is added to 2 y cubed dv plus v squared y squared dy which is equal to 0 and then we can combine these terms by factoring their common factor so we have 4 v y squared plus v squared y squared quantity multiplied by dy and this is added to 2 y cubed dv here so dividing both sides of the equation by its common factor which is y squared we have 4v plus v squared dy plus 2y dv which is equal to 0 and you notice that this is already a separable differential equation why because we can separate v or y from the other variable and we can do that by dividing both sides of the equation by this 4v plus v squared so dividing 4v plus v squared to the left 4v plus v squared to the right also and to eliminate this y here so that this will be purely in terms of v we need to divide also both sides of the equation by y so this binomial here and this binomial cancels each other so we have dy over y plus this y and this y cancels each other so we have 2dv over this v squared plus 4v here and this is equal to 0 and since it is very clear that this is a separable differential equation we can take the antiderivative to each term in this equation so we have 2 times dv over v squared plus 4v which is equal to 0 now this one is very easy to integrate but this one needs a recall from your previous calculus that we can complete this denominator as a square so doing the completing the square here we have this denominator of v squared plus 4v can be completed as a perfect square when we add 4 which is the square of the half of the coefficient of 4v so half of 4 is 2 and 2 squared is 4 but where did you get this 4 i need also to subtract 4 as if i have done nothing to this integrand and this is equated to 0 so this is the integral of dy over y plus 2 times the integral of dv over the square of this binomial v plus 2 and the square of 2 which is 4 so this is now a difference of two squares and if we let u be equal to v plus 2 we notice that du is just dv and also our a here is 2 so by substitution we have the integral of dy over y which is from here plus 2 times dv which is our du here and this is divided by the square of v plus 2 which is our u so this is u squared minus a squared because 2 is our a 
So the antiderivative of dy over y is ln y. And the antiderivative of this du over u squared minus a squared is 1 over 2a times the natural log of u minus a over u plus a which we've learned from our integral calculus and this is equated to the constant of integration c because these expressions here are equal to zero so we have l and y here which is added to 1 over a because these two and these two can cancel each other so we have 1 over a times the natural log of your u but our u is v plus 2 and then minus a which is also 2 here and this will be divided by your u which is v plus 2 and then added to a which is 2 and this is equal to the constant of integration c so we have the natural log of y plus 1 over 2 because a equals 2 then this is multiplied by the natural log of v over v plus 4 and this is equated to the constant of integration c so to remove 2 here we need to multiply both sides of the equation by 2 so we have 2 l and y and this one is just the ln of v over v plus 4 and this is equal to 2c there so applying the properties of logarithm here we have the natural log of y squared times this one here v over v plus 4 because the sum of two logarithms is just the logarithm of the product of these two here and this is equal to the constant of integration big c because two is a constant and c is a constant then therefore the product is still a constant but expressing this one to its exponential form our e when raised to the exponent of c is equal to vy squared which is the product of this one over v plus 4 and then this constant when raised to another constant is c so therefore this is v and the value of v is x over y because x is equal to vy then our v is equal to x over y and this will be multiplied by y squared over x over y plus 4 so c is equal to xy over x plus 4y over y when you combine these two terms here then therefore our c is equal to this numerator xy times the reciprocal of our denominator y over x plus 4y so our c is equal to x y squared over x plus 4y but when x is 8 because it's given in the problem our y is 2 now substituting this one here we get that c is equal to 2 because when our x is 8 and 8 times 2 squared because our y is 2 so 8 times 4 it's 32 and this is divided by x which is 8 plus 4 times 2 so 4 times 2 is 8 plus 8 it's 16 so 32 divided by 16 is 2 hence our 
particular solution is equal to this one here 2 our c is 2 times x plus 4y which is equal to x y squared and this is our particular solution to the given differential equation now at this point let's solve our problem number five so checking whether this is a homogeneous differential equation we have this y times x squared so the degree is three so y times y squared the degree is also three x times x squared the degree is three x times y squared the degree is also three so all the terms are having degrees of three but as you can see the coefficients the multiplier of dx is simpler than the multiplier of dy here so we say that since m is simpler than n then we use the substitution x equals vy and also we need to use the differential of this x which is v dy plus y dv so substituting this one to our differential equation we replace every excess by vy and the dx by this one so we have y times vy to the power of 2 because our x is vy so plus y squared times dx which is v dy plus y dv and this is added to x which is vy times 3 times x squared and our x is vy so we need to square minus 5 y squared times dy and this is equated to 0 so multiplying this one we have v squared y cubed so this is v squared y cubed here and this y times y squared we have y cubed and this is multiplied by v dy plus y dv plus this v times v squared so we have v cubed and this y times y squared is y cubed minus 5 v y cubed here because y times y squared is y cubed but this is multiplied by dy so multiplying this one by this v dy we have v cubed y cubed dy and this one by this one we have plus v squared y to the fourth dv and then this one by this one we have plus v y cubed dy and then plus y to the fourth dv plus 3v cubed y cubed dy minus 5v y cubed dy and this is equated to 0 so combining similar terms here this one and this one we have v cubed y cubed dy but this is 4 and also this one with this one here so this is minus 4 v y cubed dy plus v squared y to the fourth dv from here and we have y to the fourth dv 
which is equated to zero. Now, multiplying all the terms in this equation by one over y cubed, we have 4v cubed dy minus 4v dy plus v squared y dv plus y dv which is equal to zero so factoring the common dy here so we have 4v cubed plus 4v which is multiplied by dy plus y here so this is v squared plus 1 dv which is equal to 0 now you can see that this is a separable differential equation why because we can easily separate the y from the v and that can be done by dividing both sides of the equation by this one 4v cubed minus 4v so here 4v cubed minus 4v also we can eliminate the y here so that this term will be purely v by dividing both sides of the equation by y so this binomial and this binomial cancels each other so we have dy over y and also this y with this y cancels each other so we have v squared plus 1 dv over 4v cubed minus 4v which is equal to 0. Now as you can see that this is clearly a separable differential equation because this term is purely in terms of y and this term is purely in terms of v but to integrate this one is not easy because you need to recall your knowledge on integration by partial fractions so we need to factor the denominator into linear factors so we need to factor 4v here so 4v times v squared minus 1 but v squared minus 1 can be factored as v plus 1 times v minus 1 and this is having a numerator of v squared plus 1 dv so recalling now the decomposition by partial fractions we have v squared plus 1 over this one which is 4v times v plus 1 times v minus 1 which is equal to our a over 4v plus b over v plus 1 plus c over v minus 1 because we have distinct linear factors in the denominator there so multiplying both sides of the equation by this one we have at the left as v squared plus 1 but at the right we have a times v plus 1 times v minus 1 and this b here will be multiplied by 4v times v minus 1 and this is added also to our c multiplied by 4v times v plus 1 then when v is 0 because that is our first root here our left side of the equation is 1 because 0 squared is 0 plus 1 is 1 which is equal to a times 0 plus 1 because our b is 0 times 0 minus 1 because here that is v minus 1 plus b times 0 because it has a factor of v which is 0 and also c times 0 because c has a factor of v which is 0 
Hence, our A is multiplied by negative 1 because that is 1 times negative 1. Hence, our A is negative 1. But when your V is negative 1, because that is our second root here, we have V squared and our V is negative 1. So negative 1 squared is 1 plus 1 equals 2, which is equal to A times 0 because negative 1 plus 1 is 0 and 0 times anything is 0 plus b times 4 times negative 1 because v is negative 1 times negative 2 because negative 1 minus 1 is minus 2 plus c times 0 because we have negative 1 plus 1 is 0 and 0 times anything is 0 so therefore our B is multiplied by 8 hence our B is 1 fourth now taking V which is equal to 1 because that is our third root here we have 1 squared plus 1 is 2 so this is 2 times a times 0 because 1 minus 1 is 0 plus b times 0 because we have here 1 minus 1 is 0 plus c times 4 times 1 times 2 because 1 plus 1 is 2 and 4 times V, which is 1, we have 4 times 1. Therefore, 2 is equal to C times 8. Hence, our C is also 1 fourth. And we can take the antiderivative of each fraction here. So we have the antiderivative of dy over y plus the antiderivative of this fraction but this fraction is equal to these three fractions whose values of a b and c are here so we have a which is negative 1 over 4v plus the 1 fourth over v plus 1 plus one fourth of v minus one and this is multiplied by dv which is equal to zero so rewriting this one we have the integral of dy over y minus the integral of dv over 4v plus one fourth of the integral of dv over v plus 1 plus 1 fourth of the integral of dv over v minus 1 which is equal to 0 now the antiderivative of dy over y is l and y and the antiderivative of dv over 4v is 1 fourth of l and v and this is added to one fourth of ln of v plus one plus one fourth of the natural log of v minus one which is equal to the constant of integration c and applying the properties of logarithms here we have the ln of y which is this one plus one fourth of the natural log of this positive here so the v plus one times the v minus one divided by the negative here so we have divided by v which is equal to the constant of integration c now performing simple arithmetic here 
we have 1 fourth times the natural log of v squared minus 1 over v which is equal to the constant of integration c and substituting back to the value of our v we have the value of v which is x over y quantity squared minus 1 over x over y and multiplying each term of this equation by 4 we have 4 ln y plus ln of the value of x squared minus y squared over xy which is equal to c because 4c is still a constant so applying the properties of logarithm we have ln of y to the fourth times x squared minus y squared over xy and when x is 2 y is 1 then our c here is equal to 3 halves and substituting this value of c which is 3 halves to this equation here and simplifying it further we have 2 y to the fifth minus 2 x squared y cube plus 3 x is equal to 0 and this is our particular solution to the given differential equation and that's it if you learned something today please check out my channel for more videos like this and click subscribe click the notification bell below so you get notified whenever i will post a new video don't forget to like this video to show your support and always remember to map your way up thank you